Hello and welcome to Scuttlebutt, a program with the latest news and information from New Generation Navy. I'm Warrant Officer of the Navy, Mark Tandy, on board HMAS Waller alongside Fleet Base West. In this edition, we'll be having a look at some of the improvements being made to the submarine workforce and with Navy's new structure being rolled out, we'll see how and why the changes are being made. Navy submariners received a major boost earlier this year when CN announced a number of changes in the way that we'll be managing one of our most important assets. Navy submariners are doing it tougher than most, but things are finally improving. It's water shot Wednesday on board HMAS Farncombe. Oscillator, choose space, five troop, drain down, permission to flood two troop. Five troop, drain down, oscillator, roger. Choose space, oscillator, flood two troop. Flood two troop, choose space, roger. <laughs> In the wardroom, Executive Officer Lieutenant Commander Michael Mitchell is supervising the handover. They may be alongside this week, but the ship's routine continues. Um, and the man overboard training that's uh, due to happen, that's is that, that is being done on the wall? Weapons Kellick, Scotty Schulter, has an audience today. Any drill like this is gold for Fartkin's trainees. Being alongside for weeks at a time isn't always easy, but Scotty isn't complaining. Well, we've got the, the best boats, best conventional submarines around, so I think the morale's good. It's just uh, we do work a lot and we're used to that, so you take the pros with the cons. So. But too much hard work can have a severe impact. Farncombe Stoker leading seaman Nicholas Cowie has been around submarines for a few years now. He says while everyone wants to get the job done, there is a limit to what they can do. It's not so much that they have trouble getting people in the door, it's, it's keeping them, you know, um, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's, you know, outside industry trying to, trying to snavel people, but I think it, it, it's because it's such a demanding job that, that you don't get enough respite time and you feel burnt, you know, you feel, you feel knackered at the end of it and then when you're due to go for, for your rest, they, uh, you know, have to call you up to go to sea again because there's not enough people, so yeah, you end up just getting worn out and sick of it now. The Submarine Workforce Sustainability Review agrees. Rear Admiral Rowan Moffat found the can-do culture among submariners had become a negative in many cases. He pulls no punches in making 29 recommendations to improve the work-life balance among submariners. Without major change, Rear Admiral Moffat warned the submarine force would soon become unsustainable. See and accepted every recommendation he made. Soon after the report was released, CN flew west to meet with submariners and explained the way forward. HMAS Collins' crew appreciated the opportunity to speak with him about their conditions and their pay, particularly GOPS, GORPS and NCA. Um, NCA was designed as a a short-term stopgap, stop the bleeding whilst we get something else in place. Um, it was never intended to be a long-term solution. It was a, it was a sledgehammer, bang, stop the arrest, uh, arrest the bleeding. Um, now, we think we've, that we've achieved that. We've now got in place in both the officer and sailors community the graded officers, the graded officer pay structure and the graded other ends pay structure corps which is, quite frankly, um, a fundamentally different way of remunerating our people or paying our people. Uh, what it says is, we will pay you on the basis of your qualifications and skills, not necessarily your rank. Um, rank's important, but it's not what we're really after. We're after qualifications and skills. So GORPS and GOPS does that, and it's meant to be a dynamic structure. So we can move people around inside those, that pay structure as required. We've got to draw a line on NCR, um, and that line has been drawn, and I don't see that it would um, extend. Um, but where our workforce is under pressure, we would look at our GORP structure and our GOP structure um, to accommodate incentives where we need to. Later at a clear lower deck for submariners at Fleet Base West, CN explained that fixing the submarine workforce was his number one priority. If all goes to plan, 
Navy will get a fourth submarine crew by the end of 2011. You don't, you don't grow a submarine crew overnight. You don't grow a submariner overnight. It's a long-term national investment. So it's back to basics. One of the first initiatives arising from the Moffat report is the formation of a 27-member strong submarine support group. Petty Officer Greg Toms says that's good news. He is Farncombe's sonar supervisor and once worked on the old O-boats. Petty Officer Toms says the submarine support group will help take the strain off submariners during deployments. I've been on the receiving end and also supplied that in past and I think it's something that it really does help the crews, especially if you've got a crew that deploys overseas, they do do a lot of work and when they, uh, when they actually come alongside and they're in port, it's important that they have some sort of respite. Farncombe's L2, Lieutenant Alan Donovan, says giving submarine crews a break is crucial when they are deployed. Sometimes uh, I think there can be a perception that you're pulling into a port away from home, you might be alongside for four days, and it may appear to everyone else you're doing a four-day job alongside, but in fact you'll be working pretty hard in that four days to get all those defects rectified, get the uh, boat resupplied, get the administration uh, side sorted out, and then you're you straight back out into it again. There's a chart on Farncombe's notice board which everyone watches closely. It lists all those on board who are working towards their dolphins. If all goes to plan, there will be many more on lists like this in coming years. But it will be hard work. CN warns Navy cannot afford to ignore the problem any longer. In many ways I see this report on the submarine workforce sustainability being a bit of a microcosm of what our entire Navy uh, could well be facing in the not too distant future. So it's a good lead I think for, for us across Navy entirely. These 10 new computer terminals at Fleet Base West and 12 laptop computers on board four of our submarines will ensure our submariners have more regular access to the defence restricted network whilst they are alongside, something the rest of us on the surface fleet take for granted. New Generation Navy is all about cultural change and this is being achieved in many ways. CN's recent decision to redraft Navy's structure will further improve the way that we operate.